Oscar-nominated film number four. <laughs> I'm doing it, y'all. I'm making it through. I got a chance to watch The Holdovers on the airplane. So let's get into it. Hi, Shannon e. Johnson here, CEO of The Professional Pen, where we develop screenwriters from idea to pitch. Need help in your screenplay? Go to www.theprofessionalpen.com. So I love a simple story. Like one that's not trying so hard to make an impact. You know what I mean? Like impact comes from character and our ability to relate to those characters more than it comes from huge monologues and huge cathartic moments. Like we just want to see people being people relating to each other and growing or regressing because we also love, <laughs> we love a story when the people just can't get it together either, right? Okay, so let's talk about the things that we can learn from this film. The biggest thing that we can learn from this film is not only the simplicity, right? How it's not trying too hard, but also tracking character arcs. So because this is about the people and how they relate to each other, it is this journey that helps them to grow. So we've been talking about this a little bit with the Pixar formula and how when you use my version of the Pixar formula, Reloaded, it asks you the current emotional state of the character so that you can track it throughout and actually see what their arc is, right? So this film is a great example of tracking their emotional through line so that you understand how they started in A and ended in B. So let's talk about our three main characters. We have Angus, Paul, and Mary. And they are going to journey through Christmas break together. And as I always say, the external goal is the physical thing they're trying to do. And the reason they're trying to do it is because it feels their internal needs, right? Paul, the professor, just wants to get through Christmas break in one piece, okay? It's his job to hold things together. Angus, the student, just wants to get through Christmas break without being bored to death, right? And then Mary just wants to get through Christmas break without crumbling and falling apart. So those are their external things that they're trying to do, right? Internally, you have Paul who's dealing with embarrassment, guilt, shame, I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but you'll learn why. Then you have Angus, who's dealing with abandonment, because the reason that he's stuck at school is that he didn't go with his parents on vacation. And I am going to spoil it for Mary, because we're talking about grief, which means she lost someone. Them being together is going to fill the holes for each of them. Let's talk about the obvious, right? For Angus, who feels abandoned by his parents... Um, who doesn't have contact with his parents in the way that he would like to have his parents, guess who he gets to spend Christmas break with? A man and a woman who eventually nurture him. Those are his parents, right? I am going to spoil Mary for you. Sorry, she lost her son. Guess what she gets to do all Christmas break? Nurture another child, <laughs> right? And for, um, for Paul... A lot of his embarrassment is about not being able to achieve the goals that he should have achieved. Realizing that he is judging all of the students that he teaches based on what his past experience is and having to understand that he can relate to this young man. See, they start thinking that they're on opposite ends. Both of them think that they're on opposite ends of the spectrum, both of them judging each other. By the time we get to the end, he relates with this young man so much that he's able to throw himself under the bus so that the young man can achieve all of his goals and not end up in the same space that he was. Okay, they working, they working on stuff on the inside. If you just let him use you, we off topic. Oh, and you know what's a good exercise? A good exercise is to use that Pixar formula, not just on your own writing, but on produced stuff. So as you watch the holdovers, see if you can answer the questions in the Pixar formula to see how they physically show you how they're going to reach their internal goals. Because that's almost always a problem when people are writing dramas. 
when you're writing action, it's easy because they're physically trying to save someone or save the world or whatever. But when it's drama, which is more of an emotional story, sometimes people find it hard. Like, how do I show that this person is feeling this thing? How do I show that this person is grappling with this or trying to get over this thing, right? They do a good job with that. So utilize your Pixar formula to break down this film. With that being said, have y'all been writing? I want to see your Pixar formulas. We're going to get together and we're going to workshop some of your Pixar formulas live, right? So we won't be able to do everybody. It's going to be first come, first serve. But we're going to get on a call, do a group call, and we're going to look at a few people's Pixar formulas. And I'm going to coach you through how to make sure that you're getting the most out of it before you move on to the next part of your writing process. This Thursday, 6 o'clock PT, we're going to do this workshop. Let's 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 do it because I need to look at these Pixar formulas and I'm trying to hold you accountable, okay? I'm moving through my process. Are you moving through yours? Because I'm writing. Are you writing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Happy writing. The professional pen. The, pro- the, 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 the.